Hello, hello, hello again, everybody. Good evening, and welcome back to another episode of the Third Banner Pod. I am your host tonight, Kyle, joined by Patrick and Josh, and we have a lot to talk about, mainly with basketball recruiting. We've had a big day, really, with Terrence Edwards committing the Sunbelt Conference player of the year out of James Madison, and we've heard more things since then, obviously. How are you guys doing tonight? Doing well, man. Just uh, excited about Pat Kelsey. Ready to get this train rolling. Well, I thought you were going to say you were excited about Pat Kelly. Um, (laughs) That too. Good, good. (laughs) No, yeah, man, it's – always excited about Pat Kelly. That's nothing. Yes. Yes. It's portal season, man, and it's been uh it's been a fun start the portal season. So I'm I'm excited to talk about that tonight. Um I think there's you know, we we we've got we've got to do a lot of portaling obviously, but we're off to a good start. So pumped yeah. about that. Yeah. Yeah, for sure. It's exciting, man. I will say this. I I was, you know, before he was hired, before Pat Kelsey was hired, I was a lot like a lot of other people. It just was kind of, man, it was like, you know, we were talking about all these other names, tossing and turning. Pat Kelsey wasn't on any of our deep dives because we really didn't think it was going to get to that point. And I'll admit, I mean, there was, I was looking at the phys- defensive efficiency. I was looking at record against quad ones. I was pretty skeptical. And I, I'm not going to take back that skepticism from before he was hired, but I, I also watched a few videos, wondered if it was a little bit gimmicky, some of the stuff he was doing. But I got to say, guys, now that he is here, and this is not me being biased, this is legitimately, like, if I didn't feel this at all, if I didn't feel the good vibes, I understand the honeymoon stage is real. But there's a sense of sincerity about this. There is a sense that, you know, that he really, really is feels honored to be our coach and that he wants to prove himself. And he's he's doing it, man. And I am just so happy right now. Like, I'm not even talking about his press conference, which was great. I'm talking about everything he's done since then. He does he comes across more genuine than I thought he would based on a couple of videos. And he comes across as a guy who's really reaching out, connecting to the fan base. And not only that, but who is aware of not only this program's prestige, but is aware of how the fans have felt the last few years and seems to really be making an effort to reach out and motivate this fan base. And then you've got this whole 502 circle movement with Rick Kiever and, and all those and, and all the people that are raising money right now. Last we heard it was almost what 400,000 over 500. Over five. Mm-hmm. That's right, because you had a hundred thousand dollar donation. So yep. over five hundred now, which means matching, it's over a million. And so, wow. I mean, we really have been craving this. Louisville basketball is back on the map, and we all have a chance to donate to the circle and be a part of this, and to give Pat Kelsey the ability to go out there and take a flight to Toledo, which I may or may not have tracked to Toledo. <laughs> And get guys, or at least try to get guys like, uh, you know, some of the guys that are on our list right now. And that doesn't even include Terrence Edwards, who's already in the fold, some belt conference player of the year. Mm-hmm. No, for sure. Yeah, I think the big thing for me is like, it really felt like Kenny Payne took this job for granted. And like, he took the city of Louisville for granted, which is, it's awful being that he's one of ours, like he's one of us. And so for Pat Kelsey to come in and be like, this is the pinnacle of college basketball. Like this is where everyone wants to get to. And then not just say that, but really show it, you know, with the effort he's put in right away. Like I'm fired up, dude. Like I I had to go out and get these. Like I, I am all the way in. Like I am so ready for Pat Kelsey era, dude. Like I'm totally sold at this point. Yeah, I mean, Kyle, I think you hit on it. I think 
Pat Kelsey got here and he felt the angst of the fan base and what we've been going through these past few years and knew he had to get us pumped up. He had to be pumped up himself and not only come to the press conference and, you know, make the statements that he did and show the energy that, that, that he did. He also had to get out there and start doing the work. And he's done that so far. I mean, three commits already hasn't been a on the job for a week yet. Um, and, and it seems like he's, he's been, you know, kind of all over the country. I obviously had to go back to Charleston. He's been here. It seems like he's been taking some flights. He'll be at the final four this weekend. So, I mean, he's putting the work in and there's that sense of urgency that I constantly preached about when we would talk about the previous staff and I'm seeing it so far and I'm pumped about it. Yeah. And I, I wonder, I wonder when he took that video, you know, after Terrence Edwards obviously committed and then he said he was going hunting and we all knew that meant recruiting. I wonder if, he, you know, being at Charleston, like he has, I wonder if he really had any inkling at all that the, the tail of the plane was, was in the, you know, was in the video and that Louisville fans are crazy enough to where we're going to notice things like that. And we will track your plane. We are nuts. If he didn't want that out, it's probably one of those things where he's like thinking in his mind, I would have never guessed these guys were that crazy. Well, let me tell you something, coach, we are that crazy. And, you know, I think rational Louisville fan, rational cards fan was his Twitter handle. He's the one that figured out the plane at first. And it was looked like it was heading to Boca Raton. And all of a sudden it changed. It was actually Dalton Pence who's on the Lockdown Louisville. He's in our group chat. He's actually the one that sent that thing I tweeted out, which was showing that it was going to Toledo. So I sent that out. I said, guys, I think the plane's going to Toledo. Next thing you know, within like 10 minutes, like it's shared everywhere. This plane's going to Toledo. You know who we're going after in Toledo, right? Dante Maddox. And and so Everybody knows. And, and, and I mean, yeah, is there, is there a very small possibility? It just was a coincidence, I guess, but, but I'm not buying that. So it's just, it's just funny how crazy we are about basketball and that it's already back. All it took was just a little bit of fuel, a little bit of gasoline in the tank and our engines are revved up and we're ready to go full bore back into Louisville basketball. We've been waiting for so long. We're like a starved child and you just put a little breadcrumbs in front of us and now we're wanting that whole full course meal baby and and he's bringing it to us with these recruits right now uh terrence edwards we can get into some highlights of him in a little bit of course we did have our two charleston guys rain smith and uh who's the other one pat i always forget his name big guy out of charleston james, james, james scott. scott james scott yes yes james Over scott stick man I, for some reason, his name is just not sticking with me, and it's nothing he's done. I couldn't find many highlights on him, so I've really been able to study these other guys a lot better than I have James Scott. But, man, I'm telling you what. And then you start hearing about, you know, maybe he's going – I don't know if he's still going to Boca Raton or not because last I saw, it looks like the, the plane that was tracked to go to Boca Raton – after it left Toledo, it looks to me like it's now coming back to Louisville unless it changed again and we're just being trolled as a fan base and they just keep switching it up. I don't know. Maybe throw us off the scent. <laughs> no, for sure. But if you all want to know how bought in Kyle was, we were talking about his antics before he was hired and Kyle hated, hated Pat Kelsey's glasses. Well, I went out and got some Pat Kelsey glasses just to be. A I didn't hate his glasses. <laughs> yeah. And I threw them on. He didn't even notice. He didn't even. I, I, I never on. hated Pat Kelsey's glasses. He, he's I, all I didn't. in on the Pat Kelsey train. Yeah, no, mm -hmm. I, I never had a problem with glasses. I just the vid, the vid, some a couple of the videos I saw, I was just like, this this seems kind of cringe to me. But yeah, maybe, since, maybe my memory's off. But since I, he's I, been I, at I, Louisville, since worried. he's been at Louisville, like I can totally see why his personality worse. The glasses don't bother me. Now he's always, he makes me nervous with the amount of times he fidgets his glass. Yeah. But yeah. you know what? I always, something I do and people that watch the pod for a while know I'm nervous tick I have is I'll touch my face or I'll scratch my nose. So like we all have our little nervous fidgets and I feel like that's, that maybe that's his or maybe it's just that the glasses don't fit right. They don't really bother me though. Uh, 
my bigger issues with him were a lot of those things have already been resolved. Is he going to go after the right caliber of players? I think we're starting to see that he is. Now, we have seen that they're at the mid-major level or the lower level. I don't know if he'll take a big swing at some guys at the P6 level. I don't know, like hypothetically, if you had a star player out of another ACC school or an SEC school, is he going to make a big run at them and be able to get them? I have no idea. But he's getting guys like I've heard a few people say, you know, we got to go after some of these P6 guys and not just the mid-major guys. Well, yes and no. Because, I mean, if you can land enough really, really good players that are like a Carly Jones, Damian Lee caliber player, if you land three or four of those out of the mid-major level, those are high caliber players. I'm not saying they will be as good as Damian Lee, who's who's been in NBA for years. But we're landing – I mean, we've seen it happen. And, you know, even Trey Lewis to an extent. If you land guys that caliber that come here, they can succeed right off the bat. And I think he gets it. I, I really, really think that we're heading a good play, a good trajectory with this. If we land Dante Maddox out of Toledo, holy hell. I don't know who's seen his highlights. The guy can shoot threes from Bardstown and, and swish them in the yum. From bars, he can probably go from Bullet County and throw it up and make it in the Yum Center because he has no, unlimited range. His highlights are just him shooting from the logo nonstop and sinking them. And I thought, well, maybe it's skewed to the pot, you know, because you never miss a shot in highlights. Oh, no. I think he shot 45% either this year or last year from three. And overall, he shot just over 40%. So it's it's not it's not a hoax or it's not skewed for highlights. Like this dude is the real deal, man. And if we get him to go with Rain Smith, neither one of those guys have have a, you know a max capacity on their range. If they're on the court, they can hit the shot. Yeah, yeah, and and to your point, you know when you look at uh, you know we, we've gotten major guys, but if you look at how the transfer portal has worked these past few years, there's not a bunch of high level P six guys moving places. You'll get about like maybe 10 to 20 a year that are good high level players at the P six that'll move. But most of the, most of the stars from the portal are guys that moved up from the mid major level. Um, I mean, you look at Alabama this year, and most of their roster are transfer portal guys from smaller schools, and they're in the final four. Um, so that's kind of, you know, yes, hopefully we get a couple of P6 guys that have played against P6 competition, but I, I like our strategy so far. I, you know, you've gotten two guys that are familiar with the system and then a guy who was a, a player of the year in a small conference on a team that beat Wisconsin and made the round of 32. So it's a, it's a big time start. And some of these other players, as Kyle mentioned, that we're looking at, uh, they're big time players too. So it'll be interesting to see how the next couple weeks develop. Obviously we've got a dead period starting here soon, but uh, yeah, we'll, we'll pick it up again after that. I'm sure. Yeah, I see some comments about, uh, you know, you can't get too hyped when two out of three players so far were players from Charleston. I'm more hyped because not only did we get Terrence Edwards, but I'm hyped about what I see, the kind of guys he's going after. I, I you know, I'm not going to sit here on a pod and say I think we're going to definitely land Dante Maddox, but I think we got a shot. And I don't know, I try not to read too much into why – the plane was originally going to Boca Raton, Florida, and now all of a sudden it goes to Toledo, and then he ended up staying there and didn't make it to Boca Raton. There could be a bunch of reasons for that, but it could very well be that he decided, hey, you know, I really need to make this trip to Ohio. Like things have changed, and, I, you know, I think if, if I put the pressure on, maybe I have a really good chance at landing this guy. And I don't think he would have wasted his time if he thought it was a long shot, like, man, maybe, maybe he's covering all of his bases, but I mean, we're right before the dead period. There's a one week dead period due to the final four where you can't visit anywhere. You can't, you can't have any more contact. And I know there's some contact you can have, but it can't be on a visit. You can't visit them. They can't visit you. 
So the fact that he spent his last day visiting Dante Maddox, that alone tells me he could be a legit option for us. And if you haven't seen his highlights, like I said, you need to look at him. And I saw Trace say earlier, you know, he doesn't just shoot threes, and that's a good point because that's what I highlighted. But he he absolutely can drive. He can drive the ball. And what I noticed on a few of his highlights is he he will, you know, he will uh, he'll step forward like he's going to drive, and the guys that he's that are guarding him just back up immediately because they have to respect his ability to drive. But the second you back up and give him any space whatsoever, he's going to drain a three, guaranteed. So, you know, pick your poison. You know, do you contest a three and he'll drive past you? Or do you back up anticipating he's going to drive and then he steps in and then he does a step back three, like right in your face with space? You know, he can he can beat you either way. And uh, somebody asked if he's a combo guard or more of a two guard or a one guard. My understanding is he's a combo guard. Uh, yeah. Real quick before I hand it off, Jesse or Trent, thank you so much, man. I'll call you Jesse. I hate it when people have two first names. Trent, we appreciate it, man. Thank you for the $2. He says, like and sub so Connor can afford his bottom surgery. <laughs> All right. Yeah, Connor's a, Connor is a member of the pod, and he recently had some surgeries. So, uh, yeah. So yeah. We'll yeah. Thank you, Trent. Appreciate it, man. Yeah. No, I, I think. The other thing too, Kyle, you know, you mentioned like going after D1 players. I just don't know in the current environment that that's like just because the guy played D1 that he's going to be substantially better than a mid-major anymore. You mean like P6? Yeah, P6, right? Like how how much how many times have we seen those teams be I mean just as athletic if not more athletic than the D1 right. squad. So I don't know that it's as important as it used to be. You know, when you look at like the transfer portal, you might think you know, some of our guys, like Rain Smith, he was rated as a three-star transfer. When, like, Omaha Bellu, right. who played for Iowa State, former top ten player, barely got in this year. Like, I don't think he saw the court after, like, the third or fourth week of the season. He's rated as a 97 four-star transfer. So, I think you have to look at the tape and really look at how is he a fit for what Pat Kelsey wants to do. And don't just look at the school that they came from. Don't just look at the star ratings because right, right. the environment's a lot different than it used to be. And there's a lot of good players out there. And let's so, be real. Like if, if you see somebody at the P6 level, that's amazing. Like a Hunter Dickinson, for example, when he yeah. left Michigan, went to Kansas, you're, you're, I mean, you're paying out the wall zoo. I mean, sure. out of the wall zoo for that player. So there's not a whole lot of those guys you can get for that reason because they they demand such a high amount of money. Um, and before I hand it off, because I know Pat, you're probably wanting to say so. I just want to say real quick for anybody that was anticipating Stephen Van Trees being on tonight, he will be on Friday now. He had something come up tonight at the last second, and he met, reached out to us and said, hey, can I come on Friday instead? He wanted to be on the show, so – I don't doubt he'll be on. He just, you know, things come up. So I just want to let you guys know that if you didn't see my tweet earlier. Anyway, go ahead, Pat. Yeah, no, I mean, you guys have hit it on the nail on the head. I mean, as I said earlier, I think we'll see as we get into, in, into more deep in the portal season, we'll reach out to some P6 guys. But as Kyle said, those guys are going to be expensive. And Obviously, you know, with, with this collective news, we've got money to spend, but you don't want to blow it all on three P6 guys when you might be able to go into the mid-major ranks and, and good, get guys that are almost as good for a lot cheaper. Um, so I, I like our strategy so far. I, I would like preach, you know, again, we've got to fill 13 spots on the roster. So pr I would preach patience. I know. That's a hard thing for Kyle up there. He he gets uh, <laughs> that he gets true. pretty crazy during these times of what's next, what's next. But we've got a lot of spots to fill, and so far I, I think we've done a good job. I mean, we I think we're going to definitely need a, a pure point guard. We're going to need uh, a probably a starting quality big. I like James Scott, but he's more of a energy guy off the bench. Um, and I, I think you'll see 
a bunch more shooters. I think he's going to want a ton of shooters on this team. Andrew, thank you for the donation, $10 donation. We appreciate it, man. He says, keep up the good work. Thank you, thank you. Couldn't do it without you guys watching us. You know, obviously we did this just to – just because we feel like there's always room for people to talk about Louisville sports, didn't know how well it would be received. And we're thankful that a lot of people apparently enjoy the content. So appreciate it again, Andrew. Uh, let's see what else we got. Do you guys want to, okay. So do you guys want to get into the highlights? Like we could start with the guy that committed today, some belt player of the year, Terrence Edwards. Before we kind of look, it's just a short video. We can't do the YouTube, so people want us to get on there and do these seven-minute YouTube highlights. Well, we did that once, and the feds caught us, the YouTube feds, and they kicked us off in the middle of our episode. I don't know. You know, some diehards will remember that episode. It was a football episode. We were new, not realizing what's copyright and what's not. We were just rambling on about the highlights as we were watching them, and then, boom, all of a sudden they kicked us off until we got rid of them. So, so we are going to – take them off of what we could find on Twitter. And, and you know, Terrence Edwards, starting with him out of James Madison, Sunbelt Conference Player of the Year, averaged 17 points a game. His game, guys, if I could describe it in one word, is smooth. It looks effortless. Like, it's his athleticism doesn't overwhelm you. His speed doesn't overwhelm you. But there's he just plays in a way like it looks so natural. So natural and effortless. So we'll get into yeah, that. Yeah. Let me let me pull the share screen up here so we can get a little bit of Terrence Edwards highlights in here. Let's see. Is that popping up on the screen? Yep. Good. Oh, this is from Dalton, by the way, our guy Dalton. Shout out to Dalton, locked on Louisville. Hang on, let me pull it back. Let's see if I can get – just smooth, man. Oh, yeah. Edwards likes to run the show. You know what's weird? It's like he's a combo guard. Yeah, right. He is. But he's not the primary ball handler bringing the ball up the court. And then they use him to run the offense through once they do pass. He, he uses his body to create separation in a way that's hard to teach. It just comes natural to him. Good cut he's, there. Uh, I mean, he's 6'6", six, six, and he so, so he's 6'6", six, six and he can handle the ball, which is a big advantage in college basketball because you can see over the defense usually. Mm -hmm. He has um, a blink there on that steal. He, he goes – he can go right. He can dribble with his right and left hand both fluidly. Um, and he's really good at a change of pace, um, which obviously helps him get by people. Yeah, this is the same thing. We'll watch it one more time since it's only like a minute. But, man, like this play here, I believe, is the one where you just watch him create. No, that's not the one thing. That's a great play. That shows his ability to use his length. That play there, just creating separation with the way he – Euro step. Euro step with the ball like that. He has good vision. I mean, I'm excited about it. This is, like I said, there's not a whole lot to break down like other highlights because, again, this isn't the YouTube highlights where there's like several minutes of them. But He's kind of he's kind of like a uh, – he's, he's he reminds me a little bit of Jordan Nora. Uh, he, he's probably a little bit – less of a shooter and he can handle the ball a little bit more yeah. but nora could dribble he could shoot um he was tall edwards is probably a better defender than nora he's not elite yeah. but he's, he's very capable on that that end mm -hmm. i think it's exciting because he's as you mentioned josh he, he's a six foot six guy that they ran the offense through so he's a capable passer, can get into the lane. He's not extremely strong, but he finishes through contact well. And and because he's not like extremely well built, he gets fouled a lot. I think I was reading an article that he had um 
I, he took like 40% of his team's free throws or something like that. Yeah. Um, so he gets to the line a lot. Um, and, and he's the type of player that um, Pat Kelsey wants in his system because he's mainly a threat from close to the basket. I agree with that, Larry. From three point range, which are, are the sh- is the shot um, selection that Kelsey wants his players to take. I think he's a great addition, and I think he's a he's a definite starter for us next year, no question about it. Yeah, that Chase brings up a good point. Um, I was going to mention is, is sometimes he forces it a little bit around the basket, and so his efficiency is not. I mean, it can be better. But he has all the tools to do it. I mean, he's very crafty around the rim. Um, he just forced it a little bit, honestly, is the thing that I noticed watching some of his film. But yeah. to your point, too, Pat, he takes a lot of free throws, and he's also like an 80% free throw shooter. So as a Louisville fan with our history in free throw shooting, that's like music to our ears. Not a single person has said the comp I have, which I don't like to do former Louisville player comps, uh, usually. But there's one that as soon as I watch his – as soon as I watched his highlights, David Johnson came to mind for me more than anybody else. David Johnson, and maybe I'm maybe I'm crazy because I've not seen his name come up once. But I'm thinking of a guy who is tall, lanky, and can kind of move. I feel like David Johnson had a little more bounce. I will say that I feel like he had a little more bounce, but he had the same problem as as Terrence Edwards finishing at the rim. I remember I would think he had an easy. You know, he would do everything possible to create the separation needed to get an easy layup and then somehow find a way to miss it. And he was just so smooth. But I would say DJ was a little bit more athletic. Yeah. I tell you what, you know, he's what this guy just watching him. He's what I thought Sam Williamson would be here. Like he's who I thought we were getting when Sam Williamson committed to Louisville. Yeah, it kind of um, looks like if you watch Sam Williamson's high school highlights, it's it's yes. similar to the highlights we just watched. I, yeah, I can, yeah. I can and so it. that's who I, if I'm comping any former Louisville player, but the fact that he didn't do that at Louisville, he's he's a less athletic but maybe smoother version of a David Johnson. And I see people saying that he was more athletic. Like I, I uh I agree. That's why I'm making that point of saying, you know, he doesn't have the bounce and athleticism. But the lankiness, the ability to create separation, some of the moves are the same, in my opinion. It's just not with the same, you know, intensity and, and yeah. quickness of a David Johnson. But, man, I'll tell you. I, I will say some interesting things here. When we talk about Terrence Edwards having trouble finishing around the rim. Now, he, he jumped this season to being a starter. He was sixth man of the year last year in the Sun Belt. So he came off the bench. Obviously, volume went up for him. But last year, he he was 55% inside the three-point line. So he's yeah. a better, he had to be a better finisher around the rim last year. Obvi- actually shot a little bit better from three last year, too. Mm-hmm. So I wonder, in an offense that hopefully will have other capable scorers that, that – were better than the surrounding players he had at James Madison. If yeah, maybe the volume goes down a little bit for him, but maybe he becomes more efficient again, like he was in his sophomore and junior year there. Yeah. One thing I don't know is like DJ, he was less, he was like a streaky three point shooter too. Like there were some games where like, he was oh, just yeah, on yeah. fire. Like, I remember that Duke game where he dropped, like, 30 points. Oh, I mean, that was his favorite DJ game. Right. Like, he can just go off. And I don't know if he can shoot like DJ can like that, but he, he is a capable three-point shooter at least. I just haven't watched enough to know if he'll go through spurts like that. But I do really like that comparison. I um, Yeah, he definitely doesn't have quite the bounce of a David Johnson, but I'm telling you. I think he can have that kind of impact, but who knows? I'll tell you what, well, how about we start with the first guy that we saw highlights of, if you all would like, or the first guy that, that committed, I should say, and start with his highlights, Rain Smith out of College of Charleston. Now, his highlights are going to all look kind of similar because his whole his whole style of play on the offensive end 
is to shoot the rock, man. Shoot the three. He can. There are some – now watching some of the games in full entirety, he can create a shot off the dribble. It's not his specialty by any means. Mm-hmm. But he's not just completely, like, spot-up shooter. Like, you know, you see some of those guys, like Golki, for example, almost every shot of Golki's was, like, run off of the screen and throwing it up. The, yeah. o- the Oakland player that just lit Kentucky up and, and lit the mm-hmm. second-round opponent up. But – Rain Smith has a little bit more ball handling in him, but but his specialty is definitely to, to to shoot the rock. And so let's just watch some of his highlights. Let me zoom this in here. Now I can't see anything but the screen, so can't read the comments right now. Y'all are gonna get that same music a lot. <laughs> yes. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> this is the portal music. Yeah. And it is a little blurry on here, but that's the video. It's not my computer you can still tell his range from where he's at shooting these yeah the only thing you can see is they can shoot it from far away man yeah he's he's like five feet behind the three-point line on all of these man when you feel like every shot is going in like even on his misses some of the longer videos i watched of him i mean he just has a sweet stroke he finds the spots man yeah he, he's a spot up guy like kyle said He's not gonna. He's not gonna be a guy that that's creating his own shot a ton. Look at that. Jeez. Uh, but that you know, he's kind of like. There he is. There. See, he's got a little bit in him. Yeah. That's what he's I'm saying. He's not completely. completely he's, but yeah, he's kind of like stuff. a. He's kind of like a taller McMahon man. He can. Yeah. He's he's out there. You'll run action for him to get him open like this play there. Yeah. Um, but he's, we haven't had a shooter like him probably since McMahon. No, we have not. Absolutely not. And Pat, how tall is Smith? Do you remember? Is he uh, six Paul or six is Smith. Two? Yeah. Let's see, I can tell you. And a 6'2". That's a tough yeah, shot so, there. Pump fake, then dribbling, step back. Bang. So I like the McMahon comparison, but he'll be a little bit less of a liability on defense with his height. Yeah, and, and because he's taller and he can put the ball on the court, which McMahon could too, but McMahon was so small, it was hard for him yeah. to really score inside the the three-point arc. And here's if we get a guy that, that can – or if we get a bunch of guys that can shoot threes, which that's what it looks to me like Pat Kelsey's trying to do – you can't just like that. The problem on Ryan McMahon's teams, I feel like, at least towards the end, he was the focal point of the three point off. If you have to get all of these guys and lock them up, a guy like this coming off of all these screens is going to be really, really hard to stop. Yeah. Another thing I like about Rain that you could see in that highlights is he's got an extremely quick release. He catches it and, and it's out of his hands quick, which yes. is key for a spot up shooter like him. Mm-hmm. Yeah, no, for sure. I haven't read the comments. I miss a few. Let's see, Smith. Smith. Yeah, he. I think so too, Trace. I think he's just a little bit more. And that's no disrespect to Ryan McMahon, the the sure. original White Fright. Which, by the way, White Fright is back. White Fright 2.0. So let's see. Oh, yeah. I'm sure somebody else will have an Australian nickname for him. But you know, White Fright is an old, old nickname I had for. Uh, Ryan McMahon, because you never want him to be, you never want to leave that man open. And this is going to be the same thing with Rain Smith. Mm-hmm. So he doesn't have where he shoots range crazy off the dribble, but the offense is moving, creating space. He knows where he's going to be needed. That's the thing, too. When you have that kind of range, like the spacing is insane yeah. because yeah. you have to get right up on them. You can't give them any space. Yeah. Uh, let's see. So that that's uh, that's him. Now, let's see. You guys want to go? On to our next guy, James Scott here. You want to watch his highlights? The big man that committed from College of Charleston? Let's do it. I haven't seen as much of James Scott, and that's why his name earlier was – I was fumbling with it because he's the only one I've not been able to find too much on. But it looks like Josh found some stuff. So this is Josh's Twitter account here. Here's the music again. <laughs> Y'all are going to get it. Yeah, you sick think they have different music for different people? <laughs> And maybe it is my computer. It is very blurry. Well, and Pat, you mentioned this earlier, so I'm not trying to steal your thunder, but we haven't had an athlete like him in a minute. Yeah, he yeah. runs the floor really well. Look at him pick and roll, and his ability to have length and speed and be able, and he looks like he has really good hands down there. Like, that's something you can't teach. 
Yeah, I mean, having a big guy at this level who's athletic and can get up and down the court the way this guy can, I mean, that's that's a rarity. That's, that's, that's a what you see. Move. When you saw, when you watched Kentucky with their best teams, they always had a guy like this that could come in, block shots, run the court, dive off of screens, get putbacks. I mean, this guy's an energy player with a ton of length, man. Yeah. You know, know, I I hate to say this, but, like, I was thinking Merlin's Noel-esque, and I I hate to use a Kentucky player, but, I mean, he just has that, like, you know, some defenders, they have a natural instinct for blocking. And you just can't teach it, right? Like, you can't right. teach that natural timing, and he's got it. He, you know, I really, really think he reminds me of a raw version of Jared Allen, if I'm comparing him to anybody, especially an NBA player. And, I mean, maybe it's because I watch a lot of Cleveland now. Now, obviously, Jared Allen now is a more polished product. But when Jared Allen first got to the NBA, for example, he was a rim runner, a shot, a rim protector on the defensive end, and he uses length to, to do things like what we're seeing in this video here. Now, this is a kid who's not going to wow you with a jumper, but when you can run the floor like this in a fast-paced offense, you don't really have to if your other four guys can shoot the rock, especially behind the arc, and it looks to me like Pat Kelsey's running an offense that's going to have a lot of shooters. Uh, now, his free throw percentage can be a liability at the end of games. It's 44%, or at least I believe that's what it was. Yeah, um, 44%. 44%, man, that's that's really bad. So it's something where he's going to get fouled a lot with the style of play, being a rim runner and, and you know, inside guy. They're going to contest a lot of shots. So at the end of games, I mean, if it's close and you're trying to win or trying to claw back into the game or trying to create separation – it's going to be hard to play him on, on the court with a 44% free throw percentage. He's going to have to get that up around 60 to 65%, which is tough because that's asking – that's a lot to get in one off season. But, man, you really got to be able to get that up. But other than that, man, he's got all the tools. Like people see five points per game as a freshman. But that – you know, he's a freshman. He's a true freshman. And it doesn't tell the whole tale at all. I think he's got the most potential out of all of these guys as far as like – ceiling. I'm not saying he'll reach it. I'm not saying he'll be as good as Terrence Edwards and some of these other guys, but I think if he was his best version of himself, he absolutely could be. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I mean, I think this is the guy that has NBA potential. He's got to develop, Um, but he's the type of guy that the, the NBA likes to See, he's not he's not a stretch five by any means, but there's still a place in the NBA for athletic fives that can set picks and, and rim run. Um, I, I think my most exciting thing to me about this guy is that he is a freshman. You usually see the biggest leap from freshman to sophomore year, so I'm hoping to see a leap next year. I'm hoping he's in the gym working on his free throws because that's going to be a huge part of his game. Um, I mean, I think 100% of his shot attempts were at the rim last year. So yeah. it wasn't like he was had a bunch of post moves and, and, and was – he's not a guy you feed in the post. He's not a guy that's going to spot up for a jumper. He's going to set a pick and slip. He's going to, you know, come off picks for a, a alley-oop at the rim. He's going to get a bunch of putbacks but he's the type of guy you you need on your team. And he's the type of guy we haven't had here. I think he is what we were hoping that, um, uh, God, why can't Onawaku was going to be here. Um, And and gosh, man, I'm excited about this guy. I I really am. Again, not a starter. But energy guy off the bench that can give you, you know, 17, 18 minutes, maybe more. Well, and Pat, to your point, he was the youngest, if not the youngest, he was the second youngest player in all of uh, college basketball last year. Like he had just turned 17 when he got to campus. So, I mean, not only is he going to grow as a player, I mean, he's still only 17, right? Like 
he's still got a lot of left of like physical growing as well. So um, really excited about him. And like you said, a guy we just haven't had for a long time and having that athleticism and um, having someone you can just lob that uh, ball up to around the rim. Like how could that, how could you not get excited for a player like him? So I'm really stoked that, you know, uh, hopefully like we talked about, hopefully he's not a starter. Hopefully he's yeah. like your eighth, ninth guy, but uh, really exciting prospect. Yeah, and and Trace, I I I, I didn't mean Onawaku. I, I was fumbling over my words. I meant Okafor. He he was a oh, he, yeah. he, he looks like a guy that we thought Okafor. <laughs> I was like Onawaku. No. Yeah, like, so does he shoot him underhand too? Okafor oh, makes no. Okafor makes a lot more yeah. sense. Yeah, he. Yeah. We thought he had that, but I mean, he had a little bit of that, but yeah, it was under Kenny Payne, so it's it's hard to know who did what really, but. Yeah. I think this kid has ability to be a spark, a defensive presence. I saw somebody earlier said, you know, he needs to be able to do more than dunk. I'm not so sure he does. Um, it depends. It, it, if he's getting eight points a game on four dunks or four or, or two dunks a game and two easy layups a game, I'm okay with that. I don't think his primary thing is going to be to rack up 20 points a game. But what he needs to be able to do is when there's spacing due to all the shooters out there, he needs to be able to be the guy that can catch it in the post and make a quick instant move to the basket that catches his defender off guard and be able to have one of those, you know, close shots to the shots that are super close to the rim where it's a dunk or a layup and where, where the defender just feels completely like throws her hand like I can't you know I don't I can't keep up with this guy and that's the thing you want him in isolation in the post where other people are worried about all the shooters that that's the dream with him out there uh Terrence yeah. Jennings Terrence Jennings is a guy that played for Louisville that had a similar role to that uh I remember when Terrence Jennings would get the ball and that was his name right Terrence Jennings Pat yeah he's yeah. a five-star yeah. yeah he's a five-star player and uh, I just, you know, I start to, as I get older, my older age and with COVID brain, I start to mix players and first and last names. So I was just making sure. But Terrence Jennings was a guy that as soon as he caught it in the post could make a super athletic move like that and use his length to, to finish like that. And that was kind of his role for a while. Somebody did mention Otis George. I don't think they're very similar, but they could have a similar type of role. Mm -hmm. uh, and Otis George, I loved Otis George. But Terrence Jennings, if I'm if I'm looking at Louisville comparison, maybe, and then you know, uh, raw early NBA Jared Allen. That's just my opinion. Yeah. I, I yeah. like the Jared Allen comparison because they do a lot of the stuff, same stuff. Now Jared Allen, now you can run some offense through him. Right. He's developed he's, a he's developed you know, a lot jumper floater out to 15 feet. He's got a bunch of post moves, but early on NBA. Uh, Jared Allen is a good comparison. I think the biggest thing about James Scott, too, that we haven't really hit on, we've talked about his defense, but he's a rim protector, which we, again, something we haven't had here in a while. And, I mean, his block percentage last year was 8.5%, which is, That's like, insane. astronomical. That's Crazy. Yeah. He uh, averaged – you know, 4.6 blocks per 100 possessions, which is big time, uh, 3.2 blocks per 40 minutes. So he's a big time rim protector. Yeah, yeah. Somebody put pretty funny at Sky, put Mick as the pick and his commitment. And I did not know he did that. That's pretty funny. How could you not? If you're, you know, if you were any around Louisville at all, which he was, he played here, and you were on Twitter, you saw him make as the pigs. So that that's actually really funny. Uh, yeah. Funny. So yeah, let's see. TJ was so more much more athletic than even Scott was. I think he was more athletic just because he was really athletic. But I don't I don't know. Scott's pretty athletic. That's I'm pretty cool. impressed. I mean, I don't know. Like I said, I haven't watched as much of him as others, so maybe I need to see more. But I, I, I don't know. I think he's very athletic. I think he could give old Terrence Jennings a run for his money in that regard. But I don't know. There's a there's a top ten play he he had on Sports Center. Oh point. yeah, yeah. At yeah. some point this season, they really highlights his athleticism. I mean, he makes a block on one end, and sprints it, to the other end, yeah. sprints to the other end, and throws down a a, a great alley oop where mm -hmm. he had to get up to get the ball. The ball was high, so I, I think he's got. I mean, TJ was 
extremely athletic, but this guy's got serious athleticism. This he dude does. does. He really does. So since, uh, you know, Coach Kelsey was flying to Toledo, we assume it was about Dante Maddox Jr. And Dante Maddox did us a favor himself on his own Twitter because he knew the third banner pod needed content tonight. Uh, since Stephen Van Trees, God love him, had to cancel on us until Friday, which is fine. It's fine. But Dante Maddox said, you know, they're going to need a little bit of a little bit extra footage, a little bit of extra discussion. So he, out of the kindness of his heart for the third banner pod, dropped a highlight video of his own, knowing that there we could not use YouTube. So this, that's, that's, that's the delusion I'm going to tell myself anyway. So that being said, let me go ahead and share screen. And I really, really wish that we could use his YouTube highlights because these highlights will not show him shooting from the logo time after time after time and just sinking them left and right. And if, if you think it's just his highlights because, you know, you never miss a shot in highlights, he shoots over 40% for his career from behind the arc. So this is just another day for him. Another day, another shot from the logo. With spacing like that, from if we could land Dante Maddox to go with Rain Smith, oh my goodness! And that doesn't even equate, you know, that doesn't even add in Terrence Edwards, who isn't a prolific three point shooter, but can hit him enough that where you have to respect it, and can do other things that these guys can't. I mean, I'm really getting excited about the thoughts of these guys all on the court together. So, let me go ahead and share screen and get Mr. Dante Maddox on here. This is a guy I want more than any of them, right. even more than Edwards. I believe it or not. Hey, it's a new song. <laughs> a new song, guys. <laughs> yeah. Athleticism. That's the thing. He's not just a three-point shooter. Yeah, you can't see the range as much in this video. You can't with the angles. That's what I don't like. And he's he's different than. Rain Smith, where he can create his own shot. He's got, you know, NBA type step back moves and stuff. He's a ball. Yeah, I mean, this is a guy. I'm telling you, like, I get, I get excited watching this. I don't want to get my hopes up too much, but I do like that Pat Kelly. He was in our, you know, he's list. We were listed as one of the six schools that were showing the most interest, and then now, you know, Pat Kelsey's flying out there. You soon to see him. Mm -hmm. He can land him. This dude is a game changer. There's nothing he cannot do. Nothing on the offensive end. He's strong. You know, he can handle the ball. He can step back three, that's fine. Spot up three, he can do that. Vision, he's got it. Is he a lefty too? I don't know. He is, I believe so. We'd have we'd have him and Rain Smith, two lefty three point shooters. Man, I wouldn't be surprised if he just shoots with both hands. He does everything else. Why not be ambidextrous out there? Mm -hmm. I mean, my goodness, his highlights are that. Those highlights don't hype me up nearly as much as the transfer portal ones on YouTube, though. Mm -hmm. Oh my yeah. goodness. Yeah. Well, and, somebody said race balling for Scott. That's a decent comp i think i think i think scott's a little more athletic but ray is it was stronger well and ray had ray had some game away from the, could the, shoot the range, for sure better um, yeah longer range but but, but this listen, guy here maddox oh my gosh he's got yeah, crazy range. i i think the exciting thing about maddox if we, if we can get him is he really compliments these other guys well, especially Rain Smith, because Maddox is a guy that can create his own shot. Um, and Rain Smith being a, a big time shooter on the court will open up the court for him. And also him being able to create his own shot brings more attention to him. You'll, you'll probably see Rain Smith get some open looks off of feeds or, or ball movement created by Maddox. I think they're, they're, they're the type of, guards that you like to see play together um for sure maddox isn't a pure point guard i i do think we're going to need more of a facilitator on this team which edwards kind of is but maddox can handle the ball can shoot he gets into the lane he's kind of like edwards where he could improve on his finishing inside a little bit but man he, he's got all the tools for sure 
Yeah. I see people talking about Scott's weight and Terrence. Terrence Jennings was a rail thin too when he, he first was. got here. He developed. So was Spawn. So was Ray yeah. Spawn. There is no. I mean, there's nothing that says a Scott can't gain 15 to 20 pounds of muscle this off season, and then he's right there. I mean, I don't know. Everybody's got their comps, but I'm not worried about him being thin right now. That's, that's mainly what. Uh, that's mainly what we, you know. Talk and, about as far as comps is knowing that they usually come in and they're small. So well, and as Josh said, you know he's seventeen, so his body has a lot more development. Um, yeah, you know for sure. Ross, you gonna come <laughs> on? Ross, you gonna hop on, man? I thought you were out. <laughs> oh, the, the thing about seventeen-year-olds that you look at you want, is their is their frame and does the frame look like you can add weight to it for sure i think scott's frame definitely can take on some more weight and i don't think he'll lose athleticism by putting on muscle Um, and he's it's not like he's real thin like he looks like a college basketball player yeah well and what i what i think is interesting is like how is pat kelsey going to build this roster because he has to fill what, like ten spots, and yeah. I know we have a lot of nil, but like, I mean, it you know go, you go through it quick with ten guys. So I'm going to be interested to see oh, how he uh, utilizes like the eighth, ninth, tenth guys on the bench because he does probably, play yeah. all of his players. Like he'll play ten guys. So the tenth guy can't. We can't spend like to Kyle's point earlier a million dollars on one player because our eighth and ninth players, I mean, they have to be ready to go too. So it'll be interesting to see how he does that with so many spots and how he chooses to go after certain players, but who he's gone after so far, if that's the standard, like I'm all in. So, Hey, well, I'll tell you you who I want more than anybody that that's just entered a portal. We, you know, but they're going to know, I'm going to let them know. Bashir Jihad out of Ball State. Chirp, chirp, baby. And it's not just because I'm a Ball State alum. That's just, you know, the little cherry on top, little icing on the cake. But Bashir yeah. Jihad can, and I know the name, you know, he really will rain war on people on the court because that, he's a big, he's 6'9", and he, he, he he's a post-up player. He can post anybody up. He's got all the post moves you could ask for. But wait, there's more, as they say on the infomercials. He, can shoot. He, he has unlimited range, just like these other guys that we're recruiting. He has unlimited range. He's six nine. Can post your dudes up. He's a shot blocker, and he he has unlimited range from behind the arc. If you could land a guy like that to go with these other guys, mm-hmm. I don't know. I don't, I'm not even, I don't even know if we're involved. I don't know. Uh, somebody said Alabama was involved, which doesn't surprise me because Nate Oates runs that up tempo three point offense as well, but. Man, I, I would be the guy like like Rick Heber would kill me because I'd be like, I'm gonna give you two million dollars right now to come here. And <laughs> right. No money for anybody. <laughs> no money for anybody else. Yeah, uh, that's what I'm saying. I just don't know. Like it's almost like having a salary cap. Like yeah. I'm assuming no, I mean, it's someone who does that, but like a pat. That, you know? that <laughs> yeah, that's Rick how you got to look me, at man. it. And uh, well, I think Kyle's gonna promote this dude and get him on our radar. So send your tweets to Pat Kelsey and tell him that Kyle from the third banner pod wants us to recruit this guy. <laughs> no, maybe um, I'll do that because Pat Kelsey may remember that before he was hired, I was skeptical. I'm sorry, Pat. I'm sorry, coach. I was wrong. I was well, wrong. the, the way to get, heard, I was wrong. The way to get Kyle totally on board, he's on board, but to get him totally on board, you got to go get this guy. And um, get the glasses. Um, Hey, yeah, and get the glasses. Do me a favor, guys. You know, not during the third banner pod because you got, you got to watch us. But after you're done, first thing you do, if your wife's nagging you for, for not spending enough time doing this or that, tell her just give me just give me five ten minutes, baby. Uh, Kyle on a third banner pod said I need to watch some Bashir Jihad highlights on YouTube, mm-hmm. and it's gonna make your night. Mm-hmm. You're gonna want them just as bad as I do mm-hmm. in a Louisville uniform. Let me clarify yeah. that. Well. I think to 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 go back to Josh's comment on you know you've got to spread spread the money out. We got a lot of guys to get. The other thing to add to that is Pat Kelsey 
plays a lot of dudes. He mm -hmm. goes 10 to 11 deep, which means he, you know, we can't just fill the end of the roster with a few projects that aren't going to play. He's going to want 10 to 11 guys that are capable of playing every night, um, which means that our bench is going to have to be, you know, some talented guys too. Um, so yeah, it, it, it's a, it's an interesting strategy that these coaches and GMs, I guess is the new rule have to deal with when they get a budget from their collectives. Um, they got to, they got, got to kind of probably pop open a spreadsheet, start filling in some cells with how much this guy wants, how much that guy wants. Can we afford this guy? Should we go two, yeah. two for one here and get these two guys instead of that one guy? It, right. it, it adds a whole nother dynamic to college. Is there like a buy two, get man. one free deal out there? In hey, the we world? got that with Rain Smith because he can't get an IL because he's from Australia. There you go. So we got, true. we did, we got two for one. That's there true. we go. That's true. Uh, somebody did mention, you know, get the defense is important as well and rebounding. I think Pat Kelsey teams rebound very well from what I've been able to watch from several games now that I've watched since he was hired. I've watched full games of them. Defense is a concern, and I do agree that you know I think I think Scott is a has the potential to be a really good defensive player and rim protector, but we I worry about that, and that that is one thing I will say is watching full College of Charleston games, the biggest problem I see besides the lack of athleticism, which is understandable at that level, but the bigger issue that could carry over that I see is that a lot of times players just get lost out there. Like they just miss their guy. And I don't know. I just don't think there's, there's enough focus on that end from what I was watching because guys would just, you'd see a guy just totally lose his man out there. And then somebody would get a wide open three or a wide open lane to the basket while their guy, while the, while the defender was just looking for where did my guy go? He didn't even know. And it happened so many times that it did concern me. And I think that that does explain some of those defensive efficiency numbers that I did see that I'm, I'm concerned about. So, yeah, bringing on uh, some defensive guys is important. I do think in today's modern college basketball, there is more focus on the offensive end, three-point shots and layups, but you do have to have some defense, and Pat will be the first to tell you, you know, there's a certain amount of defensive efficiency that you need to have in order to compete for a championship. So. Yeah. Yeah, and, and I'm going to bring me, Ross on. I see he's in the lobby here. He did decide to join. Ross, welcome, man. Go ahead, Pat. Yeah, from, from an individual <laughs> defensive standpoint, you know, Terrence Edwards – is a very capable defender. I wouldn't call him elite. I, th I think he's above average, and and I think he has the the tools to be better than he is. He's got quick feet. Um, up, he's, guys. Got, he's got some length after the show. Um, so obviously the the team defensive strategy plays into it, but I, I do think with Terrence Edwards, James Scott, you've got two above average capable defenders that you've started with here. So we, we these guys that we're talking about are, aren't all about offense. We, we got a couple good defenders. I haven't, I haven't watched rain Smith play a ton of defense. So I can't really comment on him, but I've watched the other guys and they, they can play D. He had a game winning steal and shot uh, in their final game, their uh, championship game. So, I, I mean, he can do some on defense, but I don't think he's really, like, known for his defense. But it's it's in there. So Yeah. Ross, how you been, man? A, I'm doing good. It's been quite an eventful uh, week, hasn't it? It has. It <laughs> sure has. Not, not on your end at all, right? Right. <laughs> I don't know. That, I'll just be upfront and honest with everybody because that's who I am and that's – the people that's the type of person I, you know, I, I just am. Uh, I was hesitant about coming on tonight because uh, last week, this past week has been pretty stressful. And uh, between that and the weather change and the, I, I went golfing Friday and my lips got wind burnt and sunburnt. Like I got my little I got a little buddy joining me here on the on the lip and I thought it was going to look like I had a damn humpback whale barnacles showing up on camera so like you know i 
I was a little hesitant. Nobody wanted to see that, but my wife says I was being a prima donna. So uh, here I am. So yeah, we were talking about the two for one special. We got we got the two for one special with Ross tonight with him and his buddy on his lips. So. Yeah, there you go. <laughs> yeah, I mean we we we've got five on here. You know, this is my this is my little fetal brother trying to come out my lip right here. So we were just talking about obviously you've been in a chat, but the you know the guys we're in on right now, I, I see I see a lot of potential, and then of course we're hearing more yeah. names as it happens. One name we didn't talk about is the kid out of Florida Atlantic because the plane looked like it was going to Boca Raton mm -hmm. and um, it, it ended up not going. But, you know, some people thought maybe it was about John L. Davis, but it's my understanding it wasn't about John L. Davis. But, uh, you know, another kid on the team who Nick, what is his last name? Boyd. I'm, Boyd. Boyd, you're correct. Yes. Mm -hmm. That's where my COVID brain comes back in. But uh Nick Boyd. Well, I feel you so on that, man. Nick it's Boyd tough. was a uh Nick Boyd was a, a, a solid contributor for Florida Atlantic. He struggled this year with injuries, you know, coming off of injuries. My understanding was he was never fully really all that healthy. And maybe my understanding is wrong, but I've I've seen that multiple times said in multiple platforms that He's a better player when he's not struggling with whatever injuries he had this year. So he's another guy to potentially look out for, Nick Boyd. He can shoot the three. Uh, I don't know. I don't think he's a guy that you're going to look at and be like, I want this guy to carry the team. But, again, we've got 12. I saw right. people kind of turning their nose up at Nick Boyd. But we've got 12 scholarships to fill, guys. We're not going to get 12 dudes yeah. who average 20 points a game, 10 rebounds. Yeah, the, I mean – this not this is man, and not to sh listen, not not to throw dirt on the last staff or anything like that. All right, I mean, because what what is done is done, it's over. But this isn't this isn't this staff trying to fill a scholarship with Danilo or you know or uh, Jesus Fabio Basili or something like that. This kid can play. I mean, he's a he's a good player, you know, and. It, it, it just the, the kid it's to me, it's a situation where I think the kid needs a fresh start. And um, I think he could be a good fit here. Uh, I'm going to be completely honest. Uh, I know some people have their their, you know, uh, you were wa you watching over, you know, Twitter and then all social media. Like I like John L. Davis's game. Like I think he's he is a player that. He can win you games and he can, you know, you you just you get what you get with John L. You know, like sometimes he's going to be the hero and sometimes he's going to be I don't want to even say the heel, but he's a dude that's not afraid to take the shot. I mean, I respect that like hell in a player. You know what I'm saying? He, he believes in himself. So I would like to see us get involved with John L. Davis and I would love to see us get involved with Golden because I think Golden is the exact type of center we need on this team. He is the exact type of player to complement Pat Kelsey's team. And like I was saying in the chat earlier, he would be a good, I think Golden would start if he were here, uh, but he would be a nice compliment only to the, the, the perimeter players. And he will be able to do everything that you need in the, in the lane and hold it down on that end. But he would also, make uh, a guy like Scott a better change of pace player because they complement each other so well. Um, so I, I, if I'm choosing anybody off that FAU team, man, I, I, I want golden. Like, I, I don't know what we got to do to get him. I understand there's some, uh, the internet portal again first. <laughs> Cause I think, yeah, I, 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 yeah. yeah. And you know, maybe it, that's so that is official. Then he did pull his name out. That's what he yeah, said. He, he's entering the draft, and he said there's a chance he might go back to FAU, but yeah. nothing yeah. about the portal. Well, well that sucks. And, but and listen, he would be good here, man. Hey, listen, yeah. I, I don't. I, hard. I'll be honest. <laughs> I don't. I don't think we're going hard after either John L. Davis or uh, probably not, Golden. but or Golden. But listen, John L. Davis is elite man i mean 18.2 points per game and he and he shoots 48 percent from the field that is elite. Yeah. his his only bad habit is is he turns the ball over too much 
Yeah. Oh, Which is, man, honestly, I mean, Jordan it. Wara. Jordan Wara used to do that. Jordan Wara used yeah. to turn the ball over a lot, you know. Yeah. But they, 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 they can. The kids got game. I'm with you. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So I did want to say. Well, first of all, I didn't know if you guys had any final thoughts on the basketball stuff because I did want to get into some of the football stuff. You know, we're starting to get close. I know basketball has yeah. been the center of attention, and for good reason. I mean, we just got a new coach. Oh, yeah. Mm -hmm. recruiting starting to take off. We're starting to see what kind of players we're going to get. But I don't want to forget about football. I do not want to forget about football. we got a spring game coming up next Friday, which, by the way, Third Banner Pod, we want to be on site for the spring game. I still don't – we need Ash on here to really get, you know, nailed down exactly how we're going to do that. But we are going to be there. So we might as well be on here and talking about it. I don't know if that's a post game. I don't know if that's a pregame. But – no, it's got to be a pregame. Probably a pregame. So, anyway, yeah. that being said, guys, uh, I don't know. I've been trying to gather some reports out of fall – or, I mean, out of spring practice. I have not been able to go because I live pretty far off. But I'm, I'm curious, yeah. is there anything you guys are hearing in particular? I'll, t- I'll start with what I'm hearing, which is that Jamari Johnson is really taking the next step. And I know we've all been big Jamari Johnson fans. But we didn't yes. hear a whole lot about him last time around this this time. And I hadn't heard any of that. That is awesome. I'm like yeah. so. Yeah. If that if that's the yeah. case, I'm stoked because yeah. they said he's in kid, great shape, Ross. Like they physically, they he's, he's very his, fit. They say he's got his head straight, and that he's actually making plays out there. Now, obviously, got big ass. The kid out of San Diego State. <laughs> big cool, ass. Man. The, the kid out of San Diego State. Not Redman, a bad thing for a football player, man. Yet. So, without him being here, it's like, you know, those guys are going to get some more reps. You got Skinner out there, Jamari, and even Isaiah Cummins to an extent, which it sounds like Isaiah Cummins is going to be like the Gatewood type of role, his athleticism, but he's not going to be like on the field a whole lot. So, you just hope to have some big plays out of him. But that's what I've been hearing the most of. Uh, Pierce sounds like he's had some good days from what I've heard. And and I heard that Tyler Shuck struggled today, but I don't know. Again, I'm not there. So these are all secondhand things, but I heard that Shuck didn't have quite as good of a day as normal, but maybe that's because he's going to be getting married and he's got a lot on his mind right now. So congratulations, Tyler Shuck, on your uh, upcoming wedding this weekend. Yeah. Yeah. What I I heard about the – yeah, congrats for sure. Well, what I heard about the – the quarterbacks was that Shuck has been a level above and then Pierce had his best day today. So hopefully he can build on that and stack success because I heard that he had been a little up and down to start the season, but he's really started to turn it on. And then today he was the best quarterback on the field. So hopefully he can continue that because it'd be really nice to have Pierce locked up as the starter for the next three seasons. Sounds like it's between him and Harrison Bailey, and they go back and yes. forth. I'll yeah, one of those two yeah. are going to be second yeah. string. So that's interesting as well. Yeah, yeah. Which, and that's it's interesting to hear that because it sounds like Allen is not in their realm so far in terms right. of it doesn't who, who the backup's going to be. I mean, he's going to be. Li- listen, I I I know Brom said he wants like eighteen thousand quarterbacks in his quarterback room. And that's and that's fine, but you need four capable QBs, and yeah. you know how this goes. And everybody wants to play, and everything has to work out and fit in a hierarchy. I mean, we know how much they love Deuce Adams. I mean, they love Deuce Adams. So, like, I just don't. I I, I said it last year. Like, I thought Pierce, even though he was the smaller guy, he was just so much from everything that you saw and his dad being a quarterback's coach and the kid was much more groomed than Brady Allen was, even though Brady Allen had the physical tools. And then when we were going through camp and you just, and you just, you were hearing how much Allen was struggling with the playbook. And then you saw it like, I just don't, you're not hearing anything where that's really changed at this point. And it just seems like Pierce is capitalizing, moving up the ladder. Harrison Bailey, we know that they were, they liked him last year. So it's like him and Pierce are battling. We know they like Deuce. Like 
I, I think that's our one, two, three, four right there. I mean, it just, I, I don't see a room. I don't see a spot for Brady Allen on this team. And I think once, you know, spring practice is over, we'll see his name hitting the portal. I mean, I, I, hopefully he finds somewhere he can, you know, he can go and maximize his talents. I just, I just don't think it's, it's here. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, we, we still have got time left, but that's, we do so far. The reports kind of lean towards that may be happening. I'll kind of go through the good I've heard and then the, the not so good. Um, it sounds like our running back room is, is stacked so much so that we've got talented running backs that are having a hard time getting on the field. Um, mm-hmm. Brown is one who, who's a really good running back, but he's got, you know, three or four dudes in front of him that are better. And that that's crazy to think about. Yeah. Um, so the, the running back room stack, it's, it sounds like green has been Im- impressive off the edge on defense. He, he still doesn't have a ton of weight All on him. But, last year. But, small, but yeah. it sounds mm-hmm. like he's causing havoc in the backfield. So I think he'll be a big time pass rushing specialist even if he doesn't put on the weight just because, you know, you, you can bring him in for, you know, a play here, play there when you want to rush the the passer. I've heard the secondary has been extremely good. The guys we've had in there. Sick. Uh, yeah, I've heard that it's, it's been yeah. disgusting. Ha- have been big time ads and the, and the young guys too have stepped up this year. Williams uh, has made a lot of strides. Um, so the secondary sounds like it's going to be a big strength for us. You're talking about Aaron Williams, right? Yeah, Aaron Williams. Yeah, he was the other kid. For, wasn't he Pierce's teammate? Bosco yeah. kid. Yeah, yes. I yeah. thought he I was mean, the best player on the that, team. That I, I hadn't really heard much about Aaron Williams, to be honest. So you saying that, y'all hearing that? That's that's a good thing because he's coming off that injury, you know. And they basically I he was just the best used player on Bosco's team when I watched their, two of their games. Dude, he's he's got all the physical tools to be an absolute just monster in, in the, in the secondary. I mean, he is, is, he is, he could, he could absolutely be one of the best. I'm not even, I'm not saying this lightly. He could be one of the best Louisville secondary players we've ever had in our football history. He's got that much ability. Like he's, he is, he's what, he was six to 190 pounds coming in. Wasn't he? I mean, he was a, Big yeah, he's a big I mean, he's and he, big he guy, can move. Guy. He can move. Yeah, he, he's going to be a guy that probably next – I mean, there's so much depth this year. He's going to get time, I think, but it, next I year – I think he's going to beat somebody out, out him, if that's start. okay. Um, yeah. So that that's kind of the good the, – the, the, the concerning things – or not really concerning, but the not as good things that I've heard. I, I still feel iffy about the wide receiver room. It doesn't yeah. sound like that they've performed extremely well. It sounds like Lacey ha- has started to put some good practices together, but was struggling at first. Um, and, and from what I hear from the, you know the different recruiting sites and stuff, it sounds like we still need to go get a major guy in the portal after spring. Well, and it does sound like an old name we could hear resurface. I mean, y'all yep. heard that, right? I yep. mean, that's, that's yep. out there. So it's not news that Amari Huggins, Bruce may be back in play entering the portal, even mm-hmm. though he's doing well, it sounds like he's had a really good spring. At I will take him back in a heartbeat. It sounds like he's had a really yeah. good spring. He had, he had his issues on the field. He's a good kid, good kid. Yeah. But, mm-hmm. Uh, had his issues catching the ball, being consistent, and, and, and you know gaining separation, which was his big issue. It sounds like he's put on a lot of muscle, though, and really worked hard. And then he misses Louisville a lot. I don't. I mean, that's what the people that are saying that I, I fully trust would know, and that wouldn't just be something yep. that would just be misunderstood. <laughs> Let me put it that yeah. way. No, that's from a you very know. good source. So yes. I'm not saying, I mean, maybe he decides to stick it out there because, you know, some people have the philosophy and it's understandable that things are never as good the next, the second time as they once were. So maybe he decides to stick it out there and, and or maybe they fight hard to keep him. But I do think he's a name just to kind of keep an eye on as a yeah. potential returnee because I don't think it's out of the question 
that our staff is is also considering the possibility. Of yeah. Yeah. Well, I would I would welcome him back with open arms. Uh, I I always liked the player that that he was and and projected to be. Um, I know at times last year there was there were some frustrations, and I think a lot of it had to do that you know. Brom's offense is so much more demanding on a player and and like no matter what position group you are there's it's a lot more uh detail oriented and I think the game was coming a lot faster at Amari last year so he was trying to he was trying to make moves before he actually did his job and that resulted in some of those drops and um because I, I feel like a lot of times last year we we had plays drawn up to where like uh, he would get like tunnel screens and like bubble screens, you know, out on the outside. And he would try to take off running before, you know, securing the ball. And it's just like it, it just seemed like the pressure got to him a little bit. He was trying to maximize uh, his possessions on the field because he was not getting as many snaps. So. I, I would I would love to see him moved into like some sort of like uh you know in the slot like being a guy that can find the 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 spots the soft spots and zones um I think he could kill it at that um because and, and I, I I I like him in the open field I I do personally I don't you know I don't think he's I don't think he's, you know, some dynamic player in that regard, like we've seen in the past, but like, I like him in the open field and space. I think he can make plays and, and, and get yards after catch. So um, I would, I would welcome him back. I think what going to what Pat was saying, as far as needing, um, you know, maybe another guy, we, I would, it would really be nice to see somebody from like a major, p5 school like some really highly ranked kid from like last year's class or the year before um that's not getting the snaps that has all the ability in the world and they're just buried on a depth chart uh we need to see somebody like that you know brought in and they, it could work wonders you know it just we'll have to see uh, i i think i still think you know i i still think that we're going to fill up the O line a little bit more uh, after spring practice, after the spring ball's done, just like really? we did last year. Um, you know, mm -hmm. I, I know a lot of people think that the O line's pretty good, but I, I think there's room for another major caliber ad or two on that O line. Personally, that's just me, um, because we're going to see players get hurt, and you need to protect Chuck. So you need all the depth that you can possibly have because you just can't have enough of it with a quarterback like this, it, like this, it's going to make or break this year, probably. I mean, kind of like last year, you know, I mean, you just got to see unless, unless Pierce or Harrison Bailey are ready to step up and be in there, which could be, but I mean, it shut just seems like head and shoulders above everybody else right now. So, so. I do see what I do see Brad Schmidt saying we need bigger receivers. Where's Jalen Smith, Mario Burrito? I think he means Urudia. <laughs> Mario Urudia. <laughs> JR yeah. Mario Burrito. Burrito. Uh, I actually think I'll have a burrito. I, I actually think we need another burner. And and let me explain. Like we have Antonio Meeks, Chris Bell, they are bigger receivers that are possession receivers. Chris Bell has a little bit more speed than uh, Antonio oh, Meeks. Shit. But um, Ross just like fell down or something. <laughs> he did a flip. Uh, yeah, Ross so excited. He's doing backflips. <laughs> anyway, uh, so that being said, I, you know, and Jakari Brooks is a possession receiver as well for the most part. So really I see as far as burners go, I see Colin Lacey, and, uh, which – it sounds like he needs to pick up his game a little bit for what his expectations are. So I think that's kind of where some of the disappointment I'm hearing about the receiving room. I think he's got to pick it up a little bit because he's expected to do a lot and he has the ability to, to, he has breakaway speed. So you got to use it, man. And so uh, you got him and Katarius Hicks as burners. Yeah. I, don't know yeah, how I was going to say, you're sleeping on that kid no, right no, there. No, man. no, no, no. I think Katarius Hicks can be a really good player. I just that don't know kid where he is. 
I don't know where that, he's at right now on the depth chart is the problem. So you've got two guys <laughs> with burner potential. I think we need at least one more. And, I mean, Amari Elgins Bruce has some of that if he were to be the guy. And I don't know if there's other guys. I don't, I'm assuming it's not just going to be – I think he's going to bring in at least two more receivers. Yeah, supposedly uh, one of the, the best-looking receivers so far in practice has been Thompson. Um, Is he still catching that touchdown? <laughs> All that one where he was <laughs> trying to <laughs> – That's funny, man. That was the slowest yeah. touchdown I've ever seen in my life. No, that was <laughs> – no. But no, supposedly, he, he, supposedly he's been catching a lot in traffic and in, in the practices and and has a Good. every Good. recap I read he he scores a touchdown during practice so it seems like he he maybe will take a, a step up this year. I, I'm curious how we're utilizing him this year. Uh, I, I don't know. I, I would. I'm I'm not gonna say any bad words about this staff i mean i fully trust them i just um I, i'm just curious how we were using him this year like i i feel like we could have used him a little bit differently last year but yeah, also I mean, we I, had, think, I think it he's was the more depth chart the way it was last year i think he's more of a possession guy he's he's six two He's not he's not as big as Chris Bell. He doesn't have as much weight, but that's why I think we need more burners, man. We need another small burner tie. No. What we need is Bell to realize his potential well, and keep too, it but I mean on top dead in the game. Chris Bell has it all. Like he's got it. He just needs to put it on tape. Like it's mm -hmm. there. He's got everything. And like we heard last year, there were times where mentally he got he got taken out of the game. Uh, and we saw it a few times. Uh, we need him to stay dialed in. We need him to be comfortable. And you need – he might be one of those players where you need to get him going early and get him feeling himself. So he uh, – yeah. it, it, like, I, it, he might be a guy that you just kind of need to feed the ball to early so he gets he gets going. You know, I mean, it, it just might be that way. So um, I, he, Bell is the guy. Get, like he could be the guy. I, Larry, I know. Larry, Larry, April nineteenth, Friday. I believe it's at seven o'clock. A mm -hmm. spring game. Friday, April nineteenth. Two, seven two Fridays from this Friday. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, Ross. Who who I'm excited about in the receiver room is Brooks. Like he's a guy where I was really stoked when he committed. And you mentioned a guy who's at a a larger program who's buried on the depth chart. I mean, that's Brooks, right? Like. Yeah. A few years ago at Bama, he had like over 100 yards receiving in their national championship game. And then he yeah. had a few injuries, and now he's kind of been buried on the depth chart. But, I mean, he could get his revival at UofL. I mean, he could be yeah. the number one receiver and, if he hits that potential, right? So Yeah, and, and, and that's like – he's a guy that maybe we don't see a lot this spring, but being further entrenched into the – the playbook and getting further on, like in the summer, I'm expecting him to make a huge jump. I'm, I'm expecting him to become a name that's up there and separate himself because he's got a lot of talent. Like he's got a ton of talent. Like it's right. not, that's not on an accident. So I think he's a guy that maybe we see flashes of in the spring uh, but I expect to really elevate himself, it, it, you know, make a name for himself on the depth chart come come summer camp and going into fall camp. I, yeah. I really do, um, definitely. Yeah, I think you make a good point there too, Ross. That, you know, I mean, we've heard since Brom has been here, since before Brom was here, his offense is very complex. So it's yeah. not surprising that, you know, some of these receivers that, have not been in the program and have not been on the field, but for a couple weeks of practice, you know, the, the, you, the development is a little slower and you start to see them, yeah. you know, pick up more and more and more. And, and I, I, like you said, I think we'll see more from guys like Lacey and Brooks uh, yeah, at the end of the spring and, and in, in the, in the summer for sure. Yeah. And, and you know, and to, to go on the flip side of that, kind of going back to like a guy we were talking about, that seems to be the problem with like Brady Allen. It just 
everything you hear, it just it just doesn't seem to click. Um, he's not made that jump, and he's had plenty of time to kind of take advantage. And it's just it's not it's not showing up. Doesn't mean it can't still, but it's everybody else is, seems to be making a jump. And it, and and from what you hear, and it's just not it, it's not there. It's just not maybe not maybe just not a good fit. You know. Mm -hmm. Now, Steven, I mean, you're right. He, he, he's He's got all the tools to be a great quarterback. I do worry about Shuck's injury history only because when, when it's happened so many times, right. it's like you start to think, okay, the abnormality would be that he stays healthy. But, you know, Michael Penix, for example, is the guy who at IU could not see he made a glass. Then Penix, he, too. I'm not going <laughs> to. Michael Penix. Penix. Yeah. Phoenix. So, uh, Phoenix. <laughs> so that being said, he goes to Washington and has two years where he's completely healthy the entire time. So you just yeah. have to hope that Tyler Shuck has a, a similar trajectory. Christian McCaffrey, same thing. Christian McCaffrey is a great example of the same thing. So it can happen, but it does make me nervous. So for sure, it's like we, I am. I think Tyler Shuck's going to get it. I do. I think he's as long as he's healthy. I think he's he's the starter and he'll be I, fine. I'm more I feel concerned a lot more, about I, who our second yeah. string quarterback is, and I want them to separate themselves. Sure. And the only reason I want to hear that there's two guys that are neck and neck is because they're both outstanding. Because there's probably going to be a time where we need that second string guy at the worst, uh, and and you want to make sure you don't miss a beat. You don't want to. You don't want the offense to – you know, we saw what happened under Jack Plummer. No disrespect to him. He understood the offense. He grasped it mentally, but he could not do all the things you needed to do to run that offense. I just don't want to get in a situation where Tyler Shuck gets hurt and we're reducing the offense to a shell of itself. I don't want that again because it really yeah. at times this year. Or well, and that, and that's, that's the good thing with our quarterback room is – You've got guys behind Shuck. They've been in this offense now. They will have been in this offense for two years. Like, yeah, just it's, worry. And, 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 and the, 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 the growth that we're seeing, like we seemingly uh, are hearing, that they're make they're both uh, growing and 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 making strides. That's a very positive thing. So I, I don't think. You know, last year, and we all knew, and we we heard it, and we saw it. Uh, there were times where it felt like the play, but playbook was a little reserved, and it it was just because like you got to keep Plummer healthy because there just was not a good backup option behind him. You know, and it's I, I think I think Brom's going to let it go this year, man. I, I really do. I think he's going to let Shuck go out and just go guns a blazing. Use all of his talent possible, and and just let the season ride because I I feel like he's going to have confidence in that in that QB room. Mm -hmm. Well, and I mean he's he started as a freshman at Oregon. Like you don't do that by accident, right? Like yeah. you have to have some serious talent. So it's there. It's just yeah. can he stay healthy and can he adjust to Brom's system? Which and and I was gonna say like I'm feeling better about Shuck today than like when we were in the portal hunting season, you know what I mean? And we, we all had some feelings like I, I've just gone back and watched more and more videos. Some, a lot of it, the same stuff we've already seen. And you just look like, I, I look for example, like there were times we were calling design runs with plumber last year. And I was calling actually for that more last year because teams just were not keying on it. And he was capable, but he wasn't going to, like, destroy you in, like, 20-yard runs. You, you've you got to account for that with Shuck. Like, if, like he's going to run the ball this year. He's mm -hmm. going to run the ball even more than we saw last year with Plummer. And he's a real weapon with his feet. Like, he is a very much like a Joe Flacco or, or a, I, don't, I don't know if Josh Allen is good, but – Joe Joe Flacco was really slept on on his athleticism and being able to break plays for big yards with his feet. I mean, he was a big dude and he could move. And like I, that's kind of how I see Shuck. Like, got a huge arm. He can run. Like, 
I, I think we're going to see some really, really awesome things with Shuck this year. And uh, I, I'm I'm pretty damn excited, man. I mean, I you you're giving a weapon like that to Brom. He's going to I, I I just don't think he's going to hold it in. Like I think he's going to say. This is it. Like, he's going to just give everything to Shuck. He's going to give him the keys this year, 100%. He's not going to hold back. And I'm excited, man. I, I can't I can't tell you how excited I am. I'm, I'm glad that we got this kid. I really am. Yeah. I think, I think Brad makes a good point in the chat. I think you'll see, at least from what I've heard in practice, Pierce has had some really good runs. So yes. I think you might see Pierce take over the Conley role and there might be yep. some plays designed specifically for him where he comes in and, and Ross runs. loves the Ross Conley. loves the quarterback that does trick plays. That's like his favorite thing. Which I'm not I, cringe about I Pierce. I told doing you all watching Conley. spring ball last year. I said Conley is going to have packages and this I year. Like, like it was it. clearly and obvious. I, and they weren't. More times than not, they weren't. No, they weren't the last Yes, two they times. did. For a long time, we were all like, no, no. As soon as he go into the game, we were like, no, because he, everybody knew what was coming. And he would stop. Did run. <laughs> it did finally work out. the last couple of times they did it. It did it work. It worked early in the and, season, and then it and then its effectiveness kind of hit a lull, and then late in the season, it worked again. But well, it's because I would say Pierce Clarkson doing it gives me a lot more confidence. I think oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I think that. especially I think, well, and it's because sorry, Josh, it's because oh, Pierce good. is a much more competent QB. He's going to keep the defense honest when he's in there. Thank you. That's Trey. that's the reason <laughs> for sure. Well, and I seriously think it only worked at the end of the season because coaches were like, "They're not putting Conley out there to do another fucking run. Like it's not happening. There's no way he's going <laughs> to run. No way he's going to run it. And, and then he does it. And they're like, "What? <laughs> Y'all need to go back work, to the beginning but... of the season." Go back to the beginning of the year. It worked Wait. like two or three times beginning of the year. It worked in the Notre Dame game, did it not? It, it One time it failed, and I think second time it worked. Uh, I don't think so. I think it did. <laughs> <Okay>. <laughs> All right. Well, I did want to say, you know, it, the last thing I think I really, really want to talk about was just real quick with the 502 circle right now. Gosh, they're it's killing a, it. The Connor's package. It's <laughs> Connolly, not yeah. Connor. Oh no. <laughs> oh, typo. Uh anyway, so back to the 502 circle, man. What a week it has been for the circle, man. Those guys, yeah. you know, Mark Spiegel, Dan Furman, and those guys, Rick Kiebert with his match, with his million dollar up to one million dollar match. That was we awesome. talked about it a little earlier, but I think we're over five hundred thousand now. Had an anonymous donor donate a thousand dollars or a hundred thousand yep. dollars. So um, I heard I'm some radio to... host donated a thousand dollars. Did you guys hear that? <laughs> yeah, that's <laughs> that, right. Well, am I the only one? We, we heard it. Yeah, heard that? which is like, great. Which is great. It, yeah, and, and that made awesome. its way all the way to Iowa. Yeah, Man. dude. Yeah, people are talking hey. about. It. They're like, dude, some dude. like philanthropist radio what? host. <laughs> were y'all were you, <laughs> well i'm gonna guess it was andrew that did a hundred thousand dollar donation because he gave us a ten dollar donation earlier no kidding yeah so well, i'm gonna assume what, what's that pizza y'all got out there casey's it, were y'all talking were y'all talking over it over a casey's breakfast pizza hey, yes. like, man i heard about this radio guy Casey's breakfast <laughs> pizza is not bad. Now Dude, that, it is good. I did. I hey, went to man. 502 Circle, man. They're killing it I'm right not gonna. now. I'm looking at these other collectives, including basketball schools in the UK, and they're not having any success at all like what we're having right now in Louisville. It just shows the fan base is passionate. It shows that if you get the right guy, which I'll say it, Pat Kelsey's the right guy. Um, it's not the guy I thought was the right guy. He is the right guy. He's he's killing it right now. He's killing it. Mm -hmm. He's exactly what we needed. Josh Hurd, I apologize. Props to you, man, for finding it. Now, it may have been for in sure. an unorthodox way. Some things may have not went the way, that, you know, some hiccups along the way. But at the end of the day, you get the best man for the job that you can get. And I'm confident that you did that. And the donors are behind this guy. And he's bringing new donors in. And mm -hmm. so, and he's already doing it. And he's been on the job, what, a week? So the, it just yep. shows, you know, it just, 
we are a part of this. That's the thing with NIL and the collectives. We have the ability but, to help the coach, to help the staff. The fans have skin in the game. We yeah. have skin in the mm-hmm. game. Yeah. We can help, and that's what's great. I mean, yeah, attending games helps, and, you know, it generates revenue and obviously go to support. But if you can help them get the tools they need to succeed, they as in the staff, that 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 goes above and beyond what we were ever used to before NIL. We have that opportunity. So uh, I know we've, we've all been donating a circle, and I believe, yeah. I mean – I know an hour I I sent out a tweet from the third banner account last I saw, and this is just the ones I could confirm, but we we have about $3,500 at least worth of donations just from our little group chat that we do. And I mean, that's incredible. And there's people in there I know that are donating that just either. They're donating that plus, plus like tickets and yeah, everything else. So they never told us an amount or they just didn't want to, which was fine. We were just trying to figure out like, how much are we generating? And I mean, it just shows like you really get a group of passionate people together and give them something to believe in regarding the thing they want to believe in. Yeah. We will help. We will help. But Rick Keever in particular, my goodness, man, like, there is not a bigger oh, fan of the University of Louisville than that guy. There's not, yeah. at least not, in his, in his at brother. least not one that actually puts skin in the game. You know, there may oh, yeah, be a bigger he, fan who just doesn't have that ability, but he does, and he's willing to do it, and that's incredible, man. Yeah, I yeah. Mean, he puts his money where his mouth is, man. I mean, he he supports this university in a big, big way, man. I mean, yeah. He's, and, and let's be honest, man. I mean, the guy the guy is a very successful dude, but he he he's yeah. not a billionaire like some of these boosters at other schools. But I mean, he he's putting money down, man. And mm-hmm. it, it, as a U of L fan, I cannot be more thankful for a guy yep. like him because he's yeah. going to bring wins. I mean, th- th- that money translates into w's man i don't know Brandon. absolutely you know, I, I get your point and i feel like i would love to think that if i i generated that kind of money that i would do it but there's other people that could and they're louisville fans and they don't a lot of them and i'm not that's not get you know people should do what they want to do with their own money that's not yes, where i'm going course. with this of course all i'm saying is yeah it's take my advice all I'm saying is like it's not as common as you would think in those positions, but he absolutely does it, and we should be very appreciative. We couldn't do – I mean, we're going to land one or two players we could not land because of this. I mean, maybe uh, maybe more than that even, but at least a couple of guys that we probably would not be in on because mm-hmm. of him and what he's yeah. doing. So, yeah. you know, but I, yeah, I'd like to think if I, you know, like if I won the mega millions tomorrow, <laughs> right. I'd like to think, okay, I just won, you know, $200 million. I'm going to get 110 of that after taxes. Um, yeah. Let me, let me just drop 5 million of that off to, you know, 502 circle real fast. And Kyle, Kyle, would make, Kyle would make sure Jihad was on our team. I can tell you that. That would be. 100%. He, he'd I'm blow the whole I'd be, like, you, I'd be like you. Always got room for a you want, Pat Kelsey, Coach Pat Kelsey. But I have one stipulation. Yes. Yeah. And yeah. the sheer jihad is a card. Got to get it. And, and I, I want to say something too. Like right now, we're still in the wild, wild west days of the NIL. Right. There's still a lot of settling out. This is going to keep shape shifting and and taking turns. And there's going to be regulations and rules put in place because of what we're seeing right now. We just don't know when that's going to be. So right right now you're, you're in a period right now where we're basically doing what baseball does minus the luxury tax, you know, the, the, like the big market teams can go out and buy anybody they want. And yeah, they might, have to if it doesn't you know they're 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 gonna have to pay extra in a luxury tax but they can go out and just keep buying 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 players that small market teams can't do we don't we don't have that right now in nil there is no there is no 
agreement. There is no tax. There is no nothing. So like right now is the time to strike the iron when it's hot. Like the more money we put together, the better chance we're going to have of getting the resources, AKA the players to be here and win because they're, let's just be honest. Like they're chasing bags. All right. It's all out on the table right now. So the more money we have, the better off we're going to be. And, and like I said, it's, it's going to this, this environment and this landscape is going to change over time. It will not be like this 10 years from now, in my opinion, but right now it is. So your money really, really does talk. You really do have a piece in the game and it doesn't matter if it's $2, $5, $10, $100, $1,000, $100,000, $1 a $1 million dollars. It, all that matters. Well, it, ma it all adds up. So if you've got a little bit, give it. One million and one dollar. <laughs> um, no, I. Well, I mean, I'm just going through the every no, level of fan. You know, hey, I mean, yeah. it, it matters. Every dime does matter because of the amount of fans that can help contribute. That being said, guys, uh, I know I know some of us have to get out of here. Uh, now it's getting late, and so I don't want anybody's wives upset with them. <laughs> too, so, late. Uh, and too late, too late. Josh yeah. is in the doghouse already. Uh, so, hey, I'm good. I'm good. No, he's good. But I did. I did want to just put that out there that you know we appreciate the movement obviously those that initiated this movement 502 circles doing great things and you know donate if you can and, and you know help out the program if you can and you feel comfortable doing that that being said guys uh, i'm gonna go ahead and say my final thoughts are I'm, I'm happy with where things are i do understand when some people are saying i can't guarantee that pat is a guy you're right i can't guarantee it any more than before he was hired I didn't feel like he was a guy, but I will say, I feel like, I just feel like this is the right hire. I can't guarantee it. I feel like this is going to work. I feel like this guy doesn't want to let us down and I feel like he's going to work his ass off. And even if he struggles at first, adjusting, he already is. adjusting to the power six. Working his ass off. Yeah. Yeah. He's already working his ass off. But yeah, even if he struggles out the gate at first, I think he's going to, work his ass off to figure out what he needs to improve. I really, really like where we're at. That's all I got, guys. Thank you all for tuning in tonight. I'll let you guys sum it up with any of your all's final thoughts. Go ahead. Yeah, I'll just say I want to give that local radio host another shout-out for his $1,000. <laughs> I just I don't know that it's been spread enough, so I want to make sure that's out there. Um, but additionally, uh, I mean, Pat Kelsey, he's, he's fully bought me in. Look, I even have the glasses now. Like, uh, I, I'm a big Pat, Pat Kelsey guy. And like you, Kyle, I was really on the fence when we hired him. I just – honestly, I just didn't know a lot about him. Like, that was really it. Like, I did a Wikipedia search. I watched some film. But, like, I didn't know – I did not watch a lot of College of Charleston. So now that I've gotten to know him – <laughs> right, I know they won a lot of games. And so it's like, okay, if he can bring, like, a fun – uh, style that wins a lots of games. I mean, now he'll have our resources. So, I mean, he can really even take it up another notch. And then we talked about this a little bit on Friday, but like everything that he's doing outside of uh, recruiting and like on court success, like he's doing at a top notch level, like as far as like being a face in the community, like uh, raising money, hitting the recruiting trail, just even putting in that effort, like, he is knocking all of that stuff out of the park. So I think I'm as pressed with I'm as impressed as I could be with him up to this point. And I'm fully bought in like you, Kyle. Uh, so I'm just excited to see where Louisville basketball goes from here. Right. Yeah, no, I mean, listen, um, we the, the on court stuff remains to be seen. Filling out the roster remains to be seen, but you can only do what you can do right now. And what Pat right. Kelsey has done is inject some much needed passion, energy, and hard work into this program and to the fan base. And hope and you you think that we, we talked about the, the circle. The the million dollar match and what has been raised so far 
could not be done without what Pat Kelsey has done this past week. Right. So he is an important part of that fundraising. Yeah. Absolutely. Um, so you don't invest money in something you don't believe in. Yeah. Exactly. So, you know, the first week he has won it and, no, and he, gets an a, he, he gets an A plus grade from me. And, and that's all anybody, he Rick can Kimber's do. not going to do that. <laughs> that's all he can do right now. So yeah. the the rest remains to be seen, and we can grade him on the, the final roster after that happens, and we can grade him on what the on-court stuff looks like when, when the season starts. But right now he is killing it, and like like the two previous guys up here, Kyle and Josh, I, I'm I'm on board, and I'm excited about it. I get pumped about these pods because – of that energy and, and being able to talk about three guys we just got committed. And I can't wait to talk about more and, and see what the next few weeks, you know, who we add and what our roster looks like. I'm thinking, and, and, and this is, I haven't discussed it with the other guys here, but I'm thinking with it being a dead period that maybe we can next week put together our own little uh, transfer portal hot board uh, of, you know, a ranking of like the top 10 guys we'd like to go after that we think we might go after. So yeah. Can we take a picture and then show it on uh social media on a whiteboard? <laughs> right. Yeah. That, maybe, maybe that's how we'll do it. <laughs> there you go. Damn it. I, again, I mean, it, it, the past is the past, but um, yeah, I, I mean, look, uh, I, I, I am here. I, I, and I will stand on it. I had my uh, opinions. I had my feelings. Everybody saw them. Uh, everybody saw them. Um, you know, I had some time to uh, reflect after pushing send. And I'm just here to say, Pat, man, I, 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 I'm here, dude. Like, you got me. I, I'm forever a Cardinal. I will always be a Cardinal. Um, and I, I believe you, bro. Like, I will be your 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 supporter um, from one Cincy boy to another. Uh, I'm I'm excited to see what you're gonna do, man. Like I I want to see it. Uh, I want I want this to be real, and I I want I want us to all realize it together because in the end, that's what all of us want, right? That's that's all we want. We all might have different opinions about how to get there. But all that matters is getting there and being at the highest level and U of L basketball being where it's supposed to be. All right. So I think you are the guy after just one week. You're the guy. All right. So we're here. Let's rock and roll. And I'm looking forward. Fuck the bat signal. I'm looking forward to seeing some uh, glasses uh, silhouettes up in the sky. It's the pat signal, baby. <laughs> It's the, I want to see the Pat signal. I really and, like whoever came up with that idea with the yeah. I mean, I mean, right, the Pat I, signal. That's great. Keep, yeah. keep bringing it, man. Keep bringing it. Keep bringing the energy. I know this is you. I know this is you, and you're going to love us, man. And we're going to love you. Just keep doing what you're doing, and it the it's going to take. This is going to work. This is going to work, and. That's all I got to say, man. As always, go Cards, go Krogerin. Let's get it, baby. All right. If you haven't already, please like and subscribe to the Third Banner Pod channel because we really appreciate your all's feedback, positive and negative. Uh, and that being said, guys, I'm going to end this with a go Cards. Thank you all so much. Go me, cards. And, me and my baby fetus on my lips say go Cards. <laughs>